I'd like to say one time, truly God is good. Uh, Satan always trying to fight. Tell him what he can do, what he can't do. I'm about to tell him God all things is possible. That's right. Yes. And if you depend on him and lean on him, there's nothing you cannot do. That's right. Let us pray, Father. <coughs> As I put the phone in place, I can give it for one minute, minute and short. But Father God, I come right now and go by the Holy Spirit to shine down upon this your servant. Cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind. And Father God, that's right now that when I speak, people see and hear me and none of me. Yes. Father God, when your words, my mouth, meditation, my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. This acts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Scripture has not read for your hearing, but I just highlight one verse, verse six. <coughs> verse six says, "Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have." give by you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes. Thank you for a subject today. What is a name? What is a name? Have you ever considered what your name means? Or if your name have a meaning at all? Oftentimes our parents name us not think about the meaning behind the name. But if you would think about it, the book meaning of a name means nothing. It's what you make of your name. Right. It's how others see you that define your name. Church, your name does not define you. <coughs> you rather define the meaning of your name. Right. What do you mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. But Paul said old things are passed away. And everything new, that includes your name. No, you have not changed the spelling of your name, only the meaning. All right. No longer are you Bob the sinner, but now you are Bob the believer. All right. No longer are you Sarah and the girl who always looking for a good time, but now you are Sarah and the girl who spent most of her time in church. All right. mm -hmm. You make the name, you determine what people say when you hear your name. And look at the text you find Peter and John on their way into the temple to pray. They said it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This was a daily routine. The church, everyone needs to set aside a time to pray. A time where you can spend a little time with God. Maybe not 3 o'clock, but whenever you can. It do not have to be a long prayer. It may just be thanking God for the moment. Yes. Thanking Him for the blessing thus far. Because no one knows what the future holds. Right. Not the next year, not the next month, mm -hmm. not even the next day. Amen. Not even between now and the next breath you take. You never know. That's why the Bible tells us man should always pray. Yes. Amen. Thinking, taking nothing for granted. God did not promise us we would live forever. Mm -hmm. But on average, three scores and ten. He did not say everyone would live 70 years. But you see, the young are dying every day. Mm -hmm. yes. Only by his grace, Amen. only by his mercy, are we still here. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Look around you. It's praying time. Yes, it is. Not just for the saints. Not just for the country. But we need to pray for those lunatics in charge of running the country. <laughs> we need to pray for the mother who's killing the innocent babies. We need to pray for the way men are treating women. Yes. We need to pray for God to put his stop to the direction the world is heading. Pray that peace will place war. Pray that joining of hands not pray that join of hands not to hate between the races. Pray, church, that will touch the cold hearts, that God will touch the cold hearts of man and replace it with a burning love, the burning fire of love. Stop getting angry. 
when things are not going right. right. Go into your wall closet and pray. Amen. Peter and John was going up into the temple to pray. And verse 2 says, a certain lame man or crippled man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, that's arms of them going to the temple. Here is a man who is believed to be in his mid or late thirties, who had never took a step in his life. When all the baby was taking their first step, he could not. All right. When all the children were running and playing, he could not. When all the young men were helping their fathers out of the field, he could not. When all the young men were planning their wedding, he could not. He could not because if he could not work, how could he support, how could he support a wife? All right. But someone brought him to the gate every day to ask anyone kind enough to give him alms or money <coughs> because this was the only means he had of making a living. Mm -hmm. But on this day, unknown to him, his life was about to be turned around. Mm -hmm. How do I know? Because Dr. Luke said that a certain blind man, which means on this day he was picked out of the group, all of those who sat or stood at the gate, he was chosen on this day by God to be blessed. All right. You see, church, nothing happened to us by accident. Amen. No pain or suffering we go through is by chance. But rather, from the day we are born, our life is like a book. All right. And God is an author. Uh -huh. But like a book, we cannot skip to the last chapter mm -hmm. to see what the end is going to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. All I'm saying is, in life, we must live every chapter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there will be good chapters, but there will also be bad ones. Mm -hmm. You see, in every life, some rain is going to fall. Amen. Sometimes there will be strong winds. Sometimes we will fall, but even in the strongest storm, we must realize we are blessed. Yes. Yes. The crippled man was not able to walk, but still, he was blessed. He was blessed with friends or family members who carried him daily to the gate. He was blessed with life. He was still among the living. But sometimes in our suffering, sometimes in our pain, we forget that God is still Blessing us. Amen. The time you felt like ending it all, just giving up. But if it had not been for the Lord, mm -hmm. telling you not to give up, you made up your mind. There is no point in going on or going to the doctor. But if it had not been for the Lord saying, take one day at a time. All right. yes. Friends look at you and wonder how or why you will keep going on. Tell them if it had not been for the Lord, side, no if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, know who is still on my side. But he said, I will never, That's right. I will never That's right. leave you. Nor would I forsake you. Yes. If God was still looking out for me, where would I be? Today was a crippled man's day for a blessing. Out of everyone that's in the gate, today was his day. You see, church, when it seems as if everyone around you is being blessed, just remember, God has not forgot. Yeah. And your blessing is on the way. Amen. The text said the group man saw Peter and John about to go into the temple. And he asked them all, so he asked them for some money. The man saw two men who appeared to have money. Maybe it was the way they dressed. Maybe it was the way they carried themselves. Maybe it was the joy they showed as they were on their way to pray or to worship the Lord. Whatever the reason was, he expected to receive money from them. Sure, sometimes appearance can be very deceiving. A person can look one way, but in all reality, it's just the opposite. You see, church, oftentimes in life we do not get what we what are looking for. Sometimes what we expect is not what we get. Sometimes our expectations are just a little bit too high. That person or thing we have placed on hope that failed to meet our expectation, our feelings get hurt. Sometimes the point, sometimes to the point that we feel like giving up. You cannot give up on all men because the one you expect so much of that you're down. Mm -hmm. You cannot give up on all women because the one you place on the pedestal did not reach your expectation. Right. Never judge people. Never judge a person by what you see. Sure. Get to know them for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. When a man asks for arms, 
The text said that they fastened their eyes on him. In other words, they looked closely at him for the first time. No, this was not the first time of seeing him, but this was the first time they really paid attention to him. He was just a part of the scenery. They were so accustomed to seeing him, he had almost become invisible. But now, they really looked at him and saw him for what or who he really was. He was a man who for 30 some odd years could not walk, but was at the gate daily. He was a man with legs was twisted, with muscles undeveloped. He was a man reduced to a life of begging to make a living, not by choice, but by faith. In itself, he had been mocked and made fun of. He had accepted the fact that to him, he would never walk again. All hope was gone. I believe it's safe to say he was with Santa at the gate when you heard that Jesus was healing the sick, raising the dead, giving sight to the blind. I believe he heard about all the miracles that were taking place in all people's lives mm -hmm. and wondered, when me? Waiting for the day this man named Jesus will stop by just to see about him. I've been suffering for over 30 years. When is my time, when is my time coming? But after hearing about the death of Jesus, all his hope died with him. You know, church, I have found that there are those of us who can relate to this man. We have been sick for so long that we are now asking the question, why me? I've been sick so long I forgot what it feels like to wake up without pain. Every day walking, waking up was the same thing. Nobody wants to hear how sick you are. Nobody wants to be down and out to the point where you have to ask others just for help. We have made ourselves satisfied with suffering so much so that we have given up hope. We are set or we walk around with our head hung down feeling sorry for ourselves. Stop looking down. Look up. But the second part of that verse said that Peter said to the crippled man, look at us. Lift up your head. Church, we, are, we need to look up if we want to receive your blessing. Look up. The blessing does not come from looking down. For I heard people say that when blessing, prayers go up, blessing does come down. Stop looking all the time for man to bless you, for man to heal you. Man can only do but so much. Amen. But if you want a true blessing, then look up to the hills for what's coming your help. Yes. Yes. Verse 5 says, look at them, still expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, man, we just broke as you. Silver and gold, we have none. But such as I have, I will give to you. In other words, we do not have a lot of riches. It does not say, but I can imagine a man holding out his hand, expecting to receive some change, maybe a piece of copper, or some monetary gift, blessing from you two men. But Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Now Peter said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because there were others walking around claiming to be the Christ, who was not. But we said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he removed all doubt. Because there was only one Jesus Christ from Nazareth. All right. Amen. Still he sat with his hand outstretched waiting. Verse 7 says, Now know with me if you will that when Peter said, get up and walk, nothing happened. But verse 7 says, when Peter reached out, not to put money in his hand. But Peter took him by the hand. That's right. And the touch from Peter's hand that was a transfer of power mm -hmm. from God Himself That's right. through Peter mm -hmm. to the man. Amen. Yes. How do I know this? Because the Bible says that Peter, his feet and his ankle bone received strength. Yes. Yes. Not the next hour, not the next day, <laughs> not the next week, but immediately, yes. immediately. That's right. his legs and his ankle received strength. Now picture with me, if you will, legs no long, no bigger than the bones themselves. And even the bones were not straight. Mm -hmm. But right before the very eyes, the bones were made straight. Mm -hmm. Muscles began to form on the bones. Now I was wondering why the man had no pain. I mean, when you straighten out somebody's bones, they had to have some kind of pain. Mm -hmm. But then I remember God can open the man's grill, take a grill from a man's side without any anesthesiologist. 
If he can remove a man real and place it on a woman, then surely he can remove the pain when he heals somebody. Amen. 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 We won't need to put on doctors to remove our pain. Amen. But God can remove it for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then a man who never took a step in his life. Never. A man who occurred from place to place. A man who stretched a hand out, but instead he got the hand up. Right. The man did not need to go to therapy to learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, he leaped. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He leaped up. Yeah. And he began to walk. Mm -hmm. That tells me that God is a God who sometimes you have to wait for a blessing. Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait. But sometimes he's an on time God. Right. Sometimes you don't have to wait. Sometimes the healing will be immediately. That's right. He leaped up. And it says that he followed them into the temple. Mm -hmm. What's in the name? It's the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there was power. Yes. In the name of Jesus, there was healing. Yes. In the name of Jesus, there was anything you want, all you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. Yes. He said, I am that I am. Yes. In other words, whatever you need in this life, whatever you want out of this life, all you have to do is ask God for it, and God can and he will provide. Yes. In my father's house, there are many riches. Yes. There are many riches. Even the cow on a thousand hills belongs to him. Yes. You have not. Because we ask them. What is a name? A name defines who the person is. If Jesus had not healed anybody, if Jesus had not raised anybody from the dead, if Jesus had not did any of the miracles he performed, then Jesus would have just been the son of Joseph. But because he was the son of God, going around healing, he was also the son of God, giving sight to the blind, because he was the son of God, his name means something. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus that every knee Jesus. shall bow. Right. It's in the name of Jesus that every tongue right. shall confess. Yes. It's the name of Jesus is the only way we're going to make it into the kingdom. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am. I am, That's right. I am the way. Yes. No man can see the Father yes. except yes. by me. Yes. Yes. So before I take my seat, I got to ask y'all one question. What do your name mean? Mm -hmm. What do your name mean? When people see you, what do they see? Yes. Amen. 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 Doors of the church open. Now there's one who does no law and part of your sin. Or perhaps there is one who would like to get a little closer with the Lord. You know, sometimes we stray away, we don't even realize we have stray away from God until it's too late. We even have to get our house in order today. But tomorrow is not promised for anyone. We can stand. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open the door and invite me in, I will come in and sup with him, and he with me. Now, oftentimes we read that verse, we don't realize that in the time of Jesus, when you enter to a man's we enter to a man's house and sit down and eat with him, you took on his problems. You took on his troubles. If anyone came against that man in the house and you stood with him, that was Jesus saying to us right now. If we invite him into our house, no matter what come our way, he will stand with you. Yes. No matter what happened, he will stand with you. Yes. He will be there. He said, I'll stick closer than any brother. Mm -hmm. He will love you more than your own mother. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our only hope to get to heaven. Is that one? Amen. Let me see. Amen.